how are you doing? Welcome to Facts and Two Cents. This is Petal. Hope you are doing well. Hope my intro music played because it just froze for me. So maybe my internet is doing crazy things. So hopefully it played on your end. <laughs> but welcome to Facts and Two Cents. As you know, we are a channel that supports the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. Harry, Megan, Archie, Baby Lily, Mama Doria, Pula Guy, the chickens, all of us here at Sussex Squad. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome. Welcome to all of my friends in the chat. Hello, 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 my friends. Um, let's see who is here hanging out with us. Uh, let's see. Oh, Church Nelly, our awesome moderator is here saying fabulous Friday to everyone. Good morning and all of our wonderful squaddies out there in South Carolina. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, she's giving all so people waving hands to everyone. Hello, Church Nelly. And Berta is here. And and who else? Oh, Nala Bando is here. Hello, Nala Bando. Hanging out with us from the wonderful, oh, she says it's hot and raining South Africa. So there you go. It's hot and rainy in South Africa. So, but she's like warm greetings. Send us a little bit of your warmth there, Nala Bando. It's a little cold. Well, yes, I guess a little bit, not so much cold. A few days ago, it was really bad. But today, I think it's very nice. I haven't been out yet. So, but send us all your warmth from South Africa, my love. Um, let's see who else is here today. Lottie is here and Verda Sanchez is here. Hello, guys. And let's see who else. Oh, Carol Rennie is here. Hello, Carol. Good morning. Um, and our awesome moderator, Lydia, is here. Hello, Lydia. How are you, my friend? Um, let's see. I see myself in the chat. <laughs> and Lydia is reminding everyone. And everything's not clicking. There we go. Everyone who comes into the chat, if you go, if you are new here, please go ahead and subscribe and do what that little scrolly thing at the bottom says. Subscribe and click the notification bell so that you know when we drop a video. And like and share the video, please like and share us. And wonderful, thank you all so much for subscribing. We are over 6,000. Now on to seven. So we are slowly growing. And I'm good. I'm good. We are slowly getting there. Um, so it would be fantastic. You know, Lord willing, gets to 10,000 by the summer. Uh, that would be wonderful. I think that would be fantastic. So we are at six or 4,000 to go. So there you go. Um, <laughs> and if you're able, definitely um, join our Two Cents group. That would be fantastic as well. So and um, maybe you all just heard that very loud music that just went by there. <laughs> The one thing with New York is we have a lot of sound effects in New York. It's very loud here sometimes. And so the last two times it was um, pounding at the top and now it's a very loud sound out outside. So you never know what you're going to get when you, do when you go live in New York City. But anyways, let's see. Um... Let's see, oh, who else is here? Oh, Betty, Betty Glenn is here. Hello, Betty Glenn. And Sheila Davis and Mary H is here. Hi, everyone. Oh, our awesome moderator, Karen M is here. Hello, Karen, how are you? And let's see, Anne Lewis is here. Hello, Anne. And um, Emerald is here. So, and all of our friends will say hello to as we go along. But welcome, 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 everyone. Um, it's so wild. I literally uh, recorded this episode last night. I recorded it, and I'm very grateful that I, you know, I tend to go back and listen to it before I post it. And I'm very happy I did because I think I was just my. I don't know. I was just very tired last night and there are all these mistakes and all. And I was like, Oh, and so I was about to record, re-record it today and post it. And I was like, well, why are you recording? Why not just do a live and hang with all your friends? So here we are. <laughs> so I will just, uh, you know, delete my, uh, my really bad episode from yesterday. And, um, now we're doing it today, but anyways, on to our faves who've been pretty quiet. Some one of our wonderful squaddies posted that photo of Prince Harry as a young kid. Uh, you know, he looks like a teenager there. I'm assuming maybe young teen or maybe early 20s. I don't know what age he was at the, with that photo, but I'm like, look at Prince Harry. He is looking like a, you know, a young Tom Cruise, you know, 
might be in Top Gun or something. You know, got Tom Cruise on his um, my, uh, motorbike in um, or motorcycle on in um, at the Top Gun or yeah. And so I'm like. Hmm, I, I could play a young Tom Cruise, I think, you know, at least he could have done back then. And, um, you know, so I figured I'd find a young Megan as well. I don't know, maybe she's in her teens here, maybe early 20s. I don't know what age she was here either, but she's very young there. So I was like, oh, how cute they are together. <laughs> so, hey, <laughs> very, very, very nice. And I was just like, you know, I don't know. I, I, I had never seen of this photo of Harry before. I have seen the one of Meghan before, but not the one of Harry. So it was very nice to, to see a young picture of him. And I remember in Spare, he talks about uh, when he started that flight training with that, you know, um, that military guy who had an issue with Spare when, you know, a few episodes back uh, when Spare just came out. Um, one of the things Harry talked about is when he had started, when he had started that training, he just couldn't focus. And so in order to help him, the instructor took him out on a bike ride. And so they took, you know, two motorcycles and went out. And then lo and behold, paparazzi was following them and took photos of them. Was this one of the photos? I don't know. But it just reminded me of that episode from Spare. And so, but either way, Harry is looking like a young, you know, young man who should be in um, a Tom Cruise movie. So there you go. But anyways, they're doing great. He's doing great. And Spare is doing great as usual. Four weeks on and, you know, in Harry's um, adopted home state of California, Southern California and Northern California, as you can see. Spare is number one. So is California mates out there are buying up the book or is California fellow Californians um, in this Northern and Southern California are buying up the book and it's number one out there. So very, very cool. Thank you Archwell Baby for posting this. Um, I would not have seen it otherwise, so she posted it. So uh, thank you. And not only that, for the fourth straight week, um, New York Times bestseller, you know, combined ebook um and print edition um how and hardcover all of it number one <laughs> so it just uh you know spare is doing i mean again i had great hopes for spare this has gone way beyond my imagination of what how successful this book is and again this is only in english you know it's been, you know translated to 16 16 or 17, I think 16 different languages. So we're only getting what it is for the, you know, we looked at um, Mexico the other day and it was number one. I know uh, in France, it was number two last week. And so it was number one, then it went to number two. What is it like for the, you know, this coming week? I don't know, but 16 different languages. So this book is beyond anybody's wildest imagination of how successful this book is. So congratulations to Prince Harry and all his team and everybody who has been a part of Spare. So it is doing great. And uh, you know, as with everything the Sussex has touched, it's doing fantastic. <laughs> and uh, I happened to, upon this, somebody posted this, um, this podcast a couple of days ago and um you know and i'll post the link so you guys can watch it's actually really really good and it talks about how um as as you can see how our childhood shape us prince harry and institutional trauma with dr jamie merrick and um she was on this podcast and it's really um it's a great conversation with her and i think her name is veronica ali she's also a doctor and so um, it was really, you know, I think she, Veronica is British, but she also lived in the U S and Dr. Marish is also, she's American. And so some of what they talked about, um, well, the bottom, you can see it says Dr. Janet Mar Marie or Marish returned to discuss Prince Harry's book in relation to trauma, mental health, addiction, and 
what happens when someone is brave enough to speak out about institutional abuse. And it was very interesting. Some of the things I talked about, some of it was, you know, um, you know, the courage to speak out against an established institution come with its consequences. And one of those consequences that she pointed out in C highlights is having his, you know, Harry and Meghan and actually having their security stripped away from him for the first time in his life. And again, you know, Harry has always been with three, as he said, always had three, um, uh, protection officers with him and all of a sudden they, to completely strip that away it's like a consequence when you break that really really that institutional curse and speak out this is one of the things when you have an institution like that you know that's one of the consequences they will basically put your life in, in danger and which is what they have done you know and they also talk about the death threats against megan and how the, much they have been misrepresented in the u.s best and really lied on really you know and other things they talk about you know as um you can see my little red dots there um you know our obsession or human obsession with institution and elevating others you know and so they were asking like what is it about people like the royal family or celebrities um that we feel we have this innate need to elevate them or put them on a pedestal you know and it was in terms of you know with all the things that we know about the royal family and what they especially in this situation what they've done to harry and megan why is there still this need to keep them on a pedestal or make excuses for them or you know go and blame the victim and all of that stuff just so we could keep them on that pedestal even though we know that they are no better than us even though we know what is this thing that we want to keep them up there you know also other things they talked about is you know um how Princess Diana's life and her death and how, um, especially how Harry coped with it, you know, and it's so funny. She was like, you know, not funny, haha, but she's talking about how, you know, give it away. One of the secrets is how Harry for so many, much of his life never ac accepted her death. And it was just, she's missing for him. She was just missing. She went away and she's missing. And that means she would come back. He never, you know, and it's just, for me, that was one of the big things. I had not realized that that's where he was. And the, every time he said when mommy is missing and I was just, it always would jar me. It's like, oh my gosh. He, she, Diana was so real and present for him for all of his life, you know, even while she died, she was dead. It's just amazing. They also talked about misogyny in the royal family and why is it acceptable? for you know women coming into the royal family marrying in why is it an accepted thing that they should be abused and why charles and william accepted you know no matter what you think about camilla or kate or you know even edward's wife sophie or whomever else why was it acceptable that they were abused why did their boyfriends at the time or husbands stand up and speak out against the press for what they, and they, you realize they had it you know i know william a couple of times when you know kate was photographed um topless i think and they had said something about Botox, but they didn't come out and explicitly like, no, this is unacceptable and really go after the press for what they're doing, um, what they did to their wives. And so when Harry is speaking up, it was just like he said, it's like, well, our wives had to put up with it. So why should Megan be any different? And it's just like, well, why should your wife have had to put up with it? Why didn't you speak up for your wife? Why didn't you say something? Why didn't you call out the press and really go after them for what they did? And why do you expect Harry to, um, you know, tolerate a woman being abused? Like, why is a woman being abused an acceptable thing for you? You know, and so it's just one of those things that you see a lot. You, I hear this a lot. It's like, well, the other woman in the royal family has suffered abuse. So, you know, if Megan just waited out, then it would stop and everything would be fine. I was like, well, no, why is abuse okay with you? Why is that a, a thing that is okay in your culture? Why are British people accepting and tolerating the abuse of women? And that's where we are today with all of these situations in the UK of men, whether killing, beating, rape, all of these things, it's happening right now because it's a culture that tolerates abuse. It tolerates, I mean, look at what they're doing with the Harry and Meghan and they're not even in the continent, you know? They tolerate and celebrate abusive behavior. And so it just, it's really, I mean, this, um, 
the the podcast the podcast is really really interesting and really really good i just um you know and uh one of the final things she was talking about uh she said and which really resonated too is like um uh, jamie explains to us that the trauma responses of war veterans and in dysfunctional families are very similar across the board and poor harry he had a double whammy of it because he was a war veteran and he's also from a dysfunctional family and it's just like talk about a double whammy of that you know so it was just very very um interesting podcast again i'm going to put the link so that way you guys can um so that way you can um listen to it if you like it's about and I think like 40 minutes. So yeah. Anyway, moving on. This happened yesterday. I think um, Prince Charles was somewhere doing something. I don't know. I didn't care enough to try figure out where he was and what he was doing. But a part, he was out there shaking people's hands and somebody in this man in the crowd, and I saw the video, this man in the crowd um, was like, uh, sir, can you please bring back Harry? And then I guess Charles didn't really quite understand uh, understand or couldn't figure out what he's talking about. And then uh, the man said, please bring him back, sir. And Charles was like, who? The man was like, Harry, your son. And it seemed like he said um, that would be nice. I mean, I only heard the nice. I didn't hear what he said before. He kind of ate the words. And so, but they said, um, people are saying that he said that would be nice. Who knows? But in, in you know, in these things, whenever I see stuff like this is, Usually it's somebody in the press setting that up to make it, you know, so that they can have something to report. As we know, the British press, they make up the news and then report it as fact. And so would I be shocked if it was somebody planted by the press? No, you know, or if it's not, and then, you know, man want Harry to come back. I mean, Charles didn't seem too upset. He kind of laughed it off, whatever. But, you know, it's just something interesting <laughs> that happened other than people yelling at him as to why they why they should be funding his coronation. His coronation, again, that is completely unnecessary, but they have now brainwashed the British public to the point where the British public is there ready to celebrate a coronation they didn't ask for that is completely unnecessary when they can't even feed their own families and including now he's roped in all these black people to be a part of it and because you know it's all about diversity meanwhile they're literally they're picking people's pockets you know <laughs> it's just like I'm like, you know what, whatever, I won't be covering it, it's not my money that is going to be going towards King Charles, his unnecessary coronation, and his unnecessary crowns, and apparently they're building two ch two new thrones for him, you know, for one for him and one for him. It ain't my money they're taking to do that mess, so y'all sit there and go to your coronation. So anyways, moving on, talking about the UK and their mass. After, what was this, December 17th, I guess it was when Jeremy Clarkson wrote and uh, in The Sun published his really misogynistic article. It has taken the IPSO until now to decide, oh, right, we're going to do an investigation. And, you know, the IPSO is the press um, organization. It's like the independent press um, standard organization for the press. That they're supposed to be the watchdog. They're supposed to be making sure that the press doesn't go crazy and that the press doesn't are not out there attacking people and, you know, overstepping and, you know, abusing the public and all the things that the, the British press does. They're supposed to be the governing body of that. It has taken them until now to be like, oh yeah, after 21, uh, 25,100 people complained, oh yeah, we're just, we're going to take up the complaints of two people and we're only going to be doing it now and we're going to be doing an investigation, but we're not going to tell you how long it's going to take for that investigation to be. Like, why is there need to even be an investigation? Everything is out there. There's really nothing to be investigated, but you handing down a judgment. That's all you need to be doing. There just should be no investigation. There's nothing hidden. It's all out there. It's been out there since the 17th of December. And so apparently it takes them usually six months to complete an investigation. And so this is what they posted. They posted online. And um, uh, this 
complaint investigation over Jeremy Clarkson's article on the Duchess of Sussex. IPSO to investigate two groups' complaints. Never mind, they got 25,100. But, you know, let's go with two groups' complaints concerning column by Jeremy Clarkson. And so they posted on Twitter, we are investigating two group complaints concerning the column by Jeremy Clarkson in the Sun. We received more than 25,100 complaints about his column published in December 2022. And then they, and this is what they also posted. The independent press standard, <laughs> press standards, like, the UK press have no standards, but you know, let's go with that. The independent press standard organization has launched an investigation into an article published on, I'm sorry, published by The Sun on 17th of December, headline One Day Harold, the glove puppet will tell the truth about the woman talking, whatever BKS says. I don't know what that word is that was supposed to be there. So I guess some British word, I don't know. Um, the column by Jeremy Clarkson was also published online and The Sun um uk later removed uh we are taking forward complaints from two groups the faucet society and the wild foundation who said they were affected by breaches of clause um one accuracy clause three harassment and clause 12 discrimination in the article you can find out more about the representative group complaints here and it goes on to say, we will make public the outcome of this investigation through our website and on our social media channels when it is concluded. In total, IPSO received more than 25,100 complaints from members of the public about this article. And notice they have not said when they will be done with this supposed investigation. Again, what is there really to investigate? <laughs> what is there? There's nothing to investigate, but, you know, but so, but just in case you're thinking that, oh, great, you know, they're going to do something, they're going to do, uh, maybe park that idea. Because December 19, this is two days after that article was published, two days later, this is what happened. Press watchdog docks, um, docks Murdoch's dinner date after a diluge of Clarkson's complaint. Exclusive IPSO declines private invite after receiving what well, at, at the time on December 19th he received 12,000 complaints about Jeremy Clarkson's uh, Sunday column attacking Megan. So, two days after that column was published, the press watchdog head was supposed to have dinner with Rupert Murdoch. If all had gone to plan, the chair of the UK's main press regulator would have spent Monday night enjoying a private dinner with, at Rupert Murdoch's Mayfair flat. Instead, Edward Fox cancelled his plan after The Guardian asked why he had booked a dinner date with the millionaire media mogul. Fox, a peer and former conservative minister, is chair of the independent press standard organization, IPSO, which oversees and the output of Murdoch's British newspapers. And who is the owner of The Sun that published Jeremy Clarkson's article? Yes, you guessed it, Rupert Murdoch. Why is the head of the IPSO having dinner with Rupert Murdoch? And why? Because the IPSO is the most useless organization ever. It was created by Rupert Murdoch and his ilks to supposedly watch over the press. And that's why the IPSO does nothing. That's why they are the most useless. They do nothing. They, they hand down no fines. They do no investigation. It's like, it's a shock. They take this on. And maybe because people will not let it go. And, you know, it's the most um, complaints that they've ever received. So they can't hide it. They can't, you know, push it under the carpet. as they. But again, why is the head of the watchdog having dinner with Rupert Murdoch? Two days after Rupert Murdoch's paper published this article, and only because the he was on his way to doing it is only because uh, you know a Guardian reporter asked him why are you meeting with Rupert Murdoch? Did he cancel it? So I would not hold my breath on any of this. And if they decide to take action against Rupert Murdoch and the Sun. I guess we'll expect the cow to jump over the moon by then. So there we go. Talking about the press, and we're going to get into the chat in a second. This was very interesting. This was um, 
one of this um this guy mick wright he's a journalist and he put together this and it looks like what are all these little you know squares and all these little um family tree looking things this is exactly what it is it is called it's the British media's Nepo babies and or nepotism babies. And what he did was um, it was to show why the British press is the mess that it is and how a lot of the reporters that we see now in the British press all are children or very close relations to people who come before them like their fathers or their mothers who either were journalists who, you know, editors, owners of newspaper, and all of this, um, you know, their children are now reporters, journalists, owners, whatever, of newspapers. So the vileness that's been there, let's so let's say since Princess Diana, let's go with Spare and do it since uh, Princess Diana, all of those people that were reporters, whatever, their children, their next generation has this pretty much just picked up from where they left off. They just pass down their vileness onto this generation and that is how it's been going with the press it's just been nepotism and all of these people who are writing stories and a lot of times we talk about how the narrative is the same they just change they're interchanging people's like the same narrative they use on princess diana they will use some of the same narrative with um megan and and so so on and so forth is the same and why is that happening because the same people are passing down that same behavior to their children who are now taking up the mantle and are now the reporters that we have today this is why the british press is not going to change and this is the kind of nepotism that has been going on. I mean, they just did the same thing with Hollywood celebrities and their, and their Nepo babies. Well, Mick Wright just did the same thing for the British press. And that is why things will never change there because they're just passing it down. And so some of the people that he highlighted, and there was been a lot, you know, like for example, Tom Parker Bowles, uh, you know, would he have gotten the job at the Daily Mail, whatever, as a food critic or wherever, you know, he's as a food critic. And, you know, Camilla and her relationship with the press. Yes, yes, she is not an editor or owner, but her closeness with um with editors and with journalists in the press, there you go, her son's got a job. Um, even her very own um that I actually like her, Brioni Gordon, and she's one of the good ones. She's actually a friend of Harry's, and she did the interview in uh, Montecito with them recently. Did not know her um, her mom was, um, you know, a gossip columnist in the in the at the Mirror, and it's just like, oh, you know, again, passing that on. At least her mom passed on something good. Brioni is one of the good ones. Paul Docker, the horrible, horrible editor from the Daily Mail. Look, his father was um at the daily express you know and we we know all the horror of paul dacker and he was actually in the running to be the head of the ipso that one we just talked about he was actually in the, the running to be the head of that and you're thinking like one of the worst people in that you can imagine in a newspaper to be the head <laughs> unbelievable even like Anna Winter, who is the, the head over at Vogue, you know, her father was also an editor, you know, passed again, passed down. They're having these plum positions. The Dimblebees, like Jonathan Dimbleby and his brother David Dimbleby, their father was a journalist at the BBC. And what happened? Both of them are now at the, D the BBC, you know. Um, and also Jonathan Dimbleby, as we know, is the one who wrote the, the book um, uh, with Prince Charles, Prince, Prince Charles's autobiography. Um, Don Jonathan Dimbleby wrote it. And it just is very interesting to see how it's all passed down. And again, the same standard, the same, uh, sometimes the same narrative passed down from family member to family member. And good luck trying to get a job in these places because their family is pretty much icing out everybody else. Um, you know, and then he also broke down the different 
uh, families that owns proprietors, you know, that owns the papers, you know, like the Murdochs, look at them, just about all of them, you know, with um, News Corp, you know, think of all the papers that Murdoch owns, like the Sun, the, 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 the Times in London, the Fox News in the US, the, you know, the New York Post, that all of these entities that they have all over, including publishing and all of those, you know, Murdoch family, look at the family tree. You have, you know, right now, I think Lachlan Murdoch is now the uh, CEO, I think, of News Corp, News Corp. But look at the whole Murdoch family. And not only are they staying within their corporation, they're also branching out into other areas. So you might find somebody there from that family over at one of their other papers, like the, the Mirror or something. You know, it's weird how they do. They haunt the family on your right. They own the new... Um, the Daily Mail and all of them coming down, you know, and they're just passing it down from, from family to family, the Barclay family with the Telegraph, the same thing. And it's just, it's, and so again, when we think of why the press, the, the British press has been one, able to carry on this mess for so long, and it's not changing and why the British press in, in all of these papers, even in the so-called you know, um, legit press. It's not change. It's because of this stuff. They pass on not only the same vileness that they have in the past, they pass on the same narrative sometimes again, even the same words. They're not even changing. They're just changing the name of the pe person and stick the name in there. And you see this, you know, you could go back, you know, the what Megan wants, Megan gets. And you see, if you, if you do the research, you you see the same narrative of what say, Megan or Harry wants, Harry gets, whatever it is, you, you will find Will, what William wants, William gets the same thing. You'll find it under Prince Philip. One for, what Philip wants, Philip gets. You'll find it under Camilla. What Camilla wants, Camilla gets. I mean, it's the same narrative. They're just literally sticking a new person in there. <laughs> the same narrative about, you know, Princess Diana shouting at the staff and she bullied, whatever. You'll find the same thing. You stick Megan. It's just, it's crazy how it is. And that's why it's not because they're literally passing that down to generations and unless there's you know whatever they go in and break up this nep nepo baby's nonsense this is gonna keep going on and it's just it's really really sick how this is how this is and not only that they have all this control over the british i mean there is no oversight over these people IPSO is not going to do anything. The, you know, there was supposed to be the levers in part two that the government refused to put in place where it would really hold to account the press and give people some option in, in, in suing or whatever. But it's so expensive to sue right now if they don't pass some kind of legislation to curb the power of the press, they're just going to keep going. And so it is. So thank you, Mick Wright, for doing this. Uh, you know, put, and there are so many others that are not in there. You think of like, say, you know, I was like, oh, I didn't even see Penny Junior. Penny Junior's father was an um, was a reporter at the Express. I think he was an editor or something at the Express. And you know, so I didn't even see. So there are others in here that I I didn't see. And um, she is the one that her father was so horrible that she was like, you know, I don't want to take care of him, you know, uh, because he was just a horrible person. Um, but it just is very, very, again, if the British people don't do something about that, I mean, you know, I read, um, I read something, you know, about the British press, how it is just literally taking down the British people. It just, it's, it makes them look horrendous. And again, this old mentality, this ancient mentality of racism, um, misogyny, sexism, all of that. And so, so when you look at stuff like that and you're like, why are people in the year of the Lord 2023 behaving like this? Is because that's what they were they learned from their ancestors and they're just passing it down. And so you see the stuff in the press and you're like, are you serious? And yeah, they're not gonna change it because why? They don't have to. They'll just groom people to believe the things that, do, that they want to believe in the way they want to believe it. And it's just, it's really, really, really sick. And then they obviously give the family of these 
people powerful positions and they just you know people just bend and do what they want to and it's just it's really 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 sick but um it was just very interesting i'm going to put the link to it so you guys can you know you can um scroll through it and and um magnify it so you can see all the families there are a lot of them there that i've never heard of and uh you know so but and then there are these that you know and others that i've heard of so it's very very interesting to see and there are so many of them scattered throughout the British media and you know it just <laughs> including some of the royal family you know and it's just it's unbelievable so but anyways um there was that <laughs> what else is there um talk about um you know the British and uh yesterday it was it yesterday I think yeah William and Kate they went off to somewhere doing something because I honestly didn't care what it is. The only reason I cared about this was because before they arrived, there uh, this person protesting and it was a peaceful protest. He literally was holding up a blank piece of paper and apparently said, not my king. And he did it. And what happened? The cops dragged him off. And it's like, this is a country that's supposedly screaming about free speech and uh you know the right wing press especially free speech free, free speech and not one of them has been protesting about this man who is you know exercising his freedom of speech being dragged off because he said not my king and is held, holding up literally holding up a blank piece of paper blank nothing on it and said not my king and he was carted off. And so campaign to abolish monarchy, um, this person always is posting about these things. It says, um, protest in Cornwall, Cornwall is where um, William and Kate were. Today, during William and Kate's visit, the police grabbed a peaceful protester and dragged him away from the barrier. Outrageous interference, hashtag free speech. Also a peaceful, um, uh, peaceful abolish the monarchy protester called out um, no more monarchy and held up a blank piece of paper. Police dragged him away and it is being said threatened him with arrest under section five of the public order. All who support free speech should, and I'll just move myself out of the way, should condemn this. And also this organization that Netpol apparently had first time hearing about them. Um, they are, it said they're a network uh, for police monitoring in a co uh, coalition monitoring and resisting excessive discriminatory and violent policing. Um, they also talked uh, tweeted about it says Cornwall Live is rep reporting that during a visit to Falmouth by Prince William, a lone protester was removed for simply holding up a blank piece of paper. He was led away by police officers in what grounds is the in what grounds it is unclear um goes on to say ludicrously eyewitness tell us devon and cornwall police threatened to make an arrest for section 5 of the police order act displaying a sign that is threatening or abusive for a blank paper again there was nothing on the paper blank and he's been threatened and dragged away and threatened with arrest convince us again why won't abuse they won't abuse the new public order act when it passes and that's the picture over there of the police with the protester and the blank piece of paper and again all those freedom of speech right wingers who scream about their freedom of speech i have not heard one of them talking and really calling the police out for arresting a protester with a blank sign why is a peaceful protester you could say whatever you want why are they arresting and so very interesting apparently the royal family is a mute it's like whatever is the royal family you could get arrested for protesting you could have arrested for having a blank piece of paper and none of the right wingers who the royals is their mothership will say a word and nobody's screeching out about what you know where is my free speech nobody is screeching out about that when it comes to the royal family this is the hypocrisy <laughs> the utter hypocrisy of these people it is unbelievable to me but anyway i'm gonna jump in the chat for a bit and see what you guys are saying and uh yeah <laughs> unbelievable um Marcel, hello Marcel. I'm doing good. I'm assuming everyone else in the chat is doing well as well. I hope. 
listening and getting ready for work. Oh, okay. Well, I hope you have a great day at work, Marcel, as you keep listening. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, let's see. Pauline Allen says, hello, Pauline. Pauline says, I am in agreement that for our own mental wellness, we should not hold any high hopes for the investigation. There are too many alleged corrupt players in the IPSO. I mean, the whole, the whole IPSO is corrupt. It is nonsense. It is absolutely the most useless organization that I've ever heard of in my entire life. They are of no value at all in any sense of the word. It's unbelievable. And again, they are there to pretend that they are watchdogs. They are not. So um, Wendy says the watchdog is investigating the watchdog. Unreal. <laughs> Unreal. I mean, and you know, nobody's watching anything. It's just, it's nonsense. What they're doing is... They, I guess they were waiting to see if this would die down and they wouldn't have to do anything. They're waiting for people to just get over it. They're waiting for people to just forget about it so they can go along their merry way. That's this whole thing. I mean, you have 25,000 um, people complaining and you only take up the, you know, two of that. I mean, it's just, it's ridiculous. It's utterly ridiculous. Um, let's see. Chen says, he says, um, it would... It would have never happened if it was one of their royals that would have nipped, they would have nipped it in the bud and no hoopla would have ever been, would never been, been seen. In other words, dealt with quickly. Yeah, I mean, if you're talking about the, you know, the IPSO, yeah, I mean, uh, that would, ne one, never would have happened. They would never would have printed that, you know, and definitely, um, yeah, the IPSO or whomever would have, you know, he most likely would have lost his job at ITV and all of that stuff. Yeah, they would have dealt with that right away. So it just, <laughs> yes, I would not be holding my breath on for any of that stuff. Um, let's see. Mary Ann says that is exactly how racism works. One generation to another. Same thing. Yeah. It's just literally passed down. They just pass down their hate, their racism, their misogyny, their sexism, you know, their xenophobia, the whole bit is literally just passed down. And then they hold these prominent positions in the press now and you're like, well, there you go. <laughs> that explains a whole lot, you know? So, uh, Anne Lewis says, uh, one man, media mogul, more powerful than the government, wrong on many levels can bring down a country by the stroke of a pen a pen mightier than the sword bigger than propaganda more propaganda more believe um the thing is that's the thing with Rupert murdoch i mean the, you know one of the first people that the prime ministers in the uk get with is rupert murdoch media you know we saw um Rishi Sunak, the same thing, and you know, the one that was right before Rishi Sunak, she was this. What is her name? She was there for such a short time, I don't even remember what her name was. <laughs> that was one of the first people she, I think, was the second person she met with was Rupert Murdoch. Yeah, they're all the same, you know, even um, when right when Prince Charles became a uh, king. Right, you know, one of the first people he met with was a the Sun editor, the same editor that was there when Jeremy Clarkson wrote that article. You know, Rebecca, not Rebecca Brooks, the whatever the the new editor of the Sun went. There's a, literally a photograph. I think she she either tweeted it or um, wrote about it in the Sun. The photograph of her and King Charles, right when he became king. You know, and so it's just like. That's what they do. They they all basically bow down to Rupert Murdoch and his elks. And it's just like, no wonder they have all this power. They can't say anything. They basically bow to the power of, of the press. Unbelievable. Um, uh, Bonnie says, Robert Maxwell used to have the Daily Mirror. Who has it now? Um, who has the mirror now? I don't know. I didn't go look up um, who has the mirror now. And I guess uh, our awesome uh, moderator Lydia is saying hello to everyone. Um, Elizabeth, Elaine, Janine, Wendy, Mabel, Maddie, Rambo, Cookies and Cream, and Wendy Loman. Hello, everybody. <laughs> um, for Lydia. <laughs> Let's see. 
Church Nellie, our awesome narrator, says there should be some anti-lying law holding the press to uh, press accountable. Um, there should be a whole lot of things in the UK. Yeah, it just, they are allowed to do this stuff. There is nothing, there is no law that, you know, that's there that is, that's protecting the people at all in any sense of the word. And even the, the, the press, the so-called legit press that know it's a lie, they know it's wrong, they know it's, you know, fake. You would see the BBC advertising stuff from the Daily Mail and the Sun and the Express. And, you know, it's like, it, <laughs> they're all in this, this cesspool bubble. And it's like, you know, they can't seem, to, no one can seem to find their way out of this bubble at all. And so it's kind of like you see somebody, you know, a supposed legit outlet like the BBC or ITV was supposedly legit and they're all spouting the nonsense from the tabloids and it's like well then you're all tabloids then you know it just it is a mess it is an absolute mess Nancy Austin agrees she's like it's a circus crazy reporting lies yes exactly our awesome moderator said uh cookies and cream says these racist people are so sick and demented they are that too they are definitely definitely that too um let's see so this is see i'm falling on you again a uh, million nepo babies are hydra does don't lie easy to hire hydras don't like I, uh, die easy to hire the next generation the gift that keeps on giving so the poison chalice sips through the deceptive trail james o'brien father was as well yeah i mean it just <laughs> a lot of them got get jobs because their father mother whomever were in those you know were in those positions and or at least a journalist and they you know nepotism works in this situation they all get jobs they can just say oh my father was or my mother was and she works at and oh well let's hire you <laughs> you know let's just pass on whatever mess they had going on and it's just yeah it's unbelievable um let's see Alice, uh, Alice Zoom says, um, the white mon uh, monopolism on the media put a lot of pressure on by people of color to bow down and become bootlickers if they want a bone in the game, unless they are strong and creative, doable, but hard. That is the thing. 90, what is it? 97% of the British media is white. Um, yeah. Very few, uh, I'm being generous by saying 3% is um, black or people of color um, in the British media. Very, 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 very few. And you and you look and you, you would, you know, when you look at the reporting coming out of there, you see that very, very, very clear. And so when I remember when we were calling and not calling, but um, tweeting at and emailing British reporters to speak up for Megan, you know, basically it was a big fat no. I literally had a BBC reporter tell me, a black BBC reporter, tell me that um, it won't happen because black people are afraid. They're afraid to speak up because they know what will happen. You know, many would lose their job and all that stuff. And I was like, well, can you all band together? You know, and uh, Sussex Squad, Teen at Sussex Squad podcast can confirm this because we had these long, um, you know, <laughs> very long um, threads going back and forth with trying to get people in the UK to support Megan and speak out. And they wouldn't, you know. I remember this, um, you know, and you know, I was telling her, you know, I was suggesting, I'm like, well, how about banding together with other people in, you know, because I understand speaking out by yourself, especially when you're that much of a minority, is hard and is scary. And most likely you'll probably lose your job. But if you band together as a group and speak out as one, I think that was when she blocked me. <laughs> she blocked me. But it was just one of those things. It was just like, are you serious? And that was what was happening. 
And so it was just like, they're so afraid because again, it's, there's such a minority. But then after, you know, I think Megan had already left or something. And then the 72, empl- uh, after the 72 MPs, uh, spoke out and I think Megan had left already. I saw like a group of, uh, I think they were black lawyers or something like that wrote a letter and then I never heard from them again. And, um, it was just like, they were just afraid. They were really, really afraid to speak out. And look, I understand that. And that was why I was suggesting, you know, please, you know, band together. There's an organization for, um, for black and uh, people of color for their, um, for reporters. Like I just, you know, different, I guess in different areas of journalism, they wouldn't do it either. You know, we sent emails about, and they wouldn't do it either. You know, that was when we learned that there was a BET UK. We were like, really? Where have you guys been? <laughs> it was just very, it was just, it was just so silly and so sick. And that was when I remember Tina started to be like, pretty much beg people in the UK, like, look, if you want to do a podcast, we will help you. Anything to, you know, for you guys to be out there. We had a few people and I haven't seen them post recently, but we had a few people. I think a couple of people decided to start podcasts. I mean, Tina helped them and really supported them. And we definitely supported them as they were doing podcasts, you know, sneaking out on the ground from the UK. But it was just like, it is, it was just really a lot but i think one of the things that needs to happen in the uk is that there is so much talent there is so much talent and um creativity um from you know the black community in the uk i think what needs to happen is like because it's such a minority in the media create your own you know, it can't just be the voice that we all, you know, especially including me with dumping on the other day and not really dumping, but really calling them out because they allowed Prince Charles to go and edit their um, their anniversary uh, edition. But, you know, there needs to be more. There, there can't just be that one um, outlet trying to support a whole country of Black people. There need to be more. And then when they, you know, people start up, whether it's a blog or whatever, people need to support it because that's the only way you're going to overcome this. You're not going to overcome an industry that have where you're 3% and, you know, in, in as it is. But that form of media is going out. They have to embrace what it is now. More people are online watching stuff, whether it's via podcast, whether it's, you know, people starting their own, you know, web series, whatever. More and more, when these things pop up, you got to support it so that you grow it and you help your fellow people grow these things so that you, your voice would be heard, you know? So it just, I mean... They just have to try and do it because I guess, of course, it looks at this moment insurmountable. But again, that form of media is going out. The media that's really in for the future is online. It's like creating your own content, creating your own stuff, getting your own audience, building an audience and encouraging your people to support it so that it would grow. And then hopefully that inspires more and more people. But caving in and bowing to their stuff that's just not get anybody and you're going to be boot licking for the rest of your life, you know? So anyway, that's long and long winded, but <laughs> moving on, let's see. And Lewis says they're all cut from the same cloth and part of the cult gaslighting the public and worldwide. And again, we have to choose to not be gaslit. We have to choose and step out and stop listening to them. And again, create our own content. That is the thing. Create your own content, create your own stuff so that you can tell the truth. You know, that's one of the reasons Tina started Sussex, you know, Sussex Squad podcast and it inspired others, you know, and uh, Megan, I'm sorry, was it Megan Mood? I think it's it's called now um, uh, podcast and Baron and myself and Duchess of Success. And that's what all came because, you know, Tina and Michelle, they started that stuff and inspired more and more people to do it. And now, you know. Baron has like, I don't know, 30 something thousand subscribers, you know, doing amazing and has over, I don't know, over 10, I haven't checked in a long time, but over maybe 10,000, you know, we're all, we are way behind, but hey, we got 6,000. When Pam and I started, we started with like three. (laughs) I remember 
we started with like three. So there you go, you know? And so it just, you know, we just have to keep doing it. Hopefully our people will start supporting it and get our voices. So we're not having to depend on people who are gaslighting us and lying to us. So there you go. This is how it starts. Um, let's see. Cookies and Cream says free speech doesn't include destroying people and having no accountability. Exactly. Those who scream it, <laughs> this is what they want. They want to destroy and have no accountability. That's their version of free speech, you know. So um, let's see. Paul Charles says, uh, my, oh, it's like my pedal <laughs> and squaddies. Um, I was wondering if Samantha Markle is being paid by the Royal Press tabloid media paying here. What do you think? That's what I think. I mean, we talked about this in the last, or was it last episode that we talked about Samantha Markle? Yeah. I, would I be shocked? No, that's exactly what I think. She just uh, definitely does not have the money to pay for that lawyer that she has. So definitely somebody is paying. And would I be shocked if it's the, the British press? No, that would be the least surprising. That is exactly who I think is paying this. So do, I, I don't have any proof. I don't have any evidence of that. But <laughs> knowing the British press as I do, this has all the air marks. This has all, <laughs> it's like, yep, yep, yep. Of the British press, you can see their fingerprints on this. So yeah, that would be the least shocking thing. I would actually be shocked if they're not. So let's just say that. Um, let's say. And Louis says, freedom of speech laws when uh, freedom of speech when laws are being made to restrict demonstration for human rights. Uh, UK are gradually aligning to erode people's democracy. Yeah, you can see that in the US as well, you know, Florida, Texas, Mississippi, it is just, yeah, these right wing people, um, you know, whether it's a state or a country that's, you know, predominantly right wing, whatever, you see this kind of thing, they scream free speech so that they are, get, you know, so that they have the right to abuse as you know, as we, uh, someone was saying um, in a, um, the last post, they want the right to abuse with no penalty, with no con. That's their version of free speech. You know, this, which is where they should be screaming the fact that this man is there. He's, you know, freedom of speech. Is you could say what you need. You know, he's holding up a blank sign. You know, and they arrest him. This is a violation of that. But no, none of those people screaming free speech have said a one word about this, you know? So, and so, you know, that whole bit is just absolutely fake. <laughs> yes, Sean, we see you. This is Sean's mantra. <laughs> I don't mean to laugh, but every time I see Sean, I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna post this for you, Sean. Andrew, you're a sick old man, disgusting, yep. That is a fact. That is absolutely a fact. And don't be surprised when he comes back and be a rookie royal because that's what they're working on. So there. Um, Paul also says, I hope Harry and Meghan stay home and not go to that coronation and instead take the kids to Disneyland on Archie's birthday. That would be fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Do something very, very American. Go to Disneyland. And I'm sure the squad, actually, I saw a save the date. Um, the squad is going to be doing something um, for some kind of fundraising for, um, you know, Archie's birthday. And it might, I think it goes for obviously from Archie's birthday to Lily's birthday on um, June, in June 4th. So yeah, I, I think that is exactly what we're going to be doing. I'm definitely not going to be covering. I, I'm not even talking about it, that fake coronation. If even if Harry and Meghan decide to go and take the kids, I am not covering it. I have no patience for the coronation and that mess. So yes, it will not be something I will be covering. So I will be covering our donating to the needy. That's what I'll be covering. So yeah, um, let's see. Jeannie Hyde says, basically the media can abuse Meghan, but a member of the public gets arrested for holding up a blank piece of paper. Make it make sense. Exactly, Jeannie. Make it make sense. Exactly. Um, let's see. Uh, Mary H says, oh, she's talking to Paul. See, of course the royals are helping Samantha. I hope 
the Sussex do something different too and not go to that circus. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I hope so. I mean, Harry said, you know, if they hold to it that, you know, he said, you know, a lot of things could happen within, you know, with when he did the interview and the fake coronation. Um, but the things that he's looking for is, um, you know, own, taking ownership, the, their family take ownership of what they did. He's looking for accountability and he, they need to apologize to Megan for what they did. So will he hold to that? We'll see. We will see. That's what he said. So we can only go by what he said. So who knows? Uh, let's see. uh sylvia said oh she's talking the cookies and cream says yes as supporters we must celebrate megan our biracial black queen every chance we get okay yes we are definitely i'm all about celebrating them so there you go <laughs> um oh iris d um oh thank you trish nelly for um highlighting this um eight months membership here thank you so much um <laughs> thank you so much iris d thank you thank you thank you i appreciate it you must support thank you thank you thank you you guys are amazing i mean again i always say it's really out of the kindness of your heart that you support it's nothing i've done you know so i appreciate your support in so many ways thank you <laughs> i appreciate it um let's see And says Robert Maxwell was um, G. Maxwell's father who owned a mirror and that employed P uh, Pierce Morgan, all the same cult. Uh, mirror was the biggest phone hacker in the 80s. Yeah, they were the ones that, yeah, definitely. And I think that was, he was also fired from the mirror. I think the mirror was the, also the one that, where they, um, they had these fake pictures of British soldiers basically torturing Iraqis that all turned out to be fake, you know, and Pierce Morgan has yet to apologize for that. Um, his attitude was, well, it could have happened. And again, slap on the wrist, no consequences. I mean, for all the things this man has done, where he was the editor I think it was News of the World that, I think, was it News of the World that hacked Molly Dollars, uh, that Millie Dollar, I think, Millie Dollar, the, the, the teenager who was killed, hacked the parent's phone or hacked her phone or something like that. It was just like, it was sick. And again, some people went to jail for some of the phone hacking and bragging and all of that stuff that was happening, but Pierce Morgan has yet to face the consequences of, and that's why, again, Pierce Morgan is free to do what he's doing now because there's been no consequences other than people fire him and then he, you know, <laughs> he just gets a better job, it seems, and more money for what he has done. So yeah, unbelievable. Uh, Oh, Jay, man, I'm so happy you're here. Not late. <laughs> and what if you missed anything? The replay is always there. No need. I'm just happy you're here. So there. <laughs> um, thank you so much. I appreciate that. I am happy to know that you like the channel. So thank you. Thank you for your support. I appreciate. Um, <laughs> so Joy Bell says, um, it's over six years and the Sussexes are still being abused. When will it stop? It will stop when the people stop reading those outlets. When people stop reading it, when people start boycotting, it will stop when we stop sharing it, when we stop clicking on it, when we stop liking it, it will stop. You know, so today I actually literally posted that, you know, the British tabloids especially, they cannot do what they're doing without the British people. I get a lot of pushback on this. I, this is like probably the third or fourth time I'm tweeting the exact same thing. And I get a lot of pushback from British people who tell me, no, 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 it's the tabloids, it's not the people. They, it was like, no, 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 no. If you did not read the tabloids, if you did not buy it, if you're not clicking on it, if you're not sharing it, whether it's screenshot or not, they couldn't do what they're doing. They will cease to exist. They exist because you consume it. And because you're consuming it and then 
doing this big fake outrage when they do something like Jeremy Clarkson or the P.S. Morgan do, you know, this, you know, I, I don't believe a word, but Megan says when she's, you know, talking about her uh, suicidal ideation and all of those things, you know, then there's this big fake outrage. But on the whole, you, the British people, you've been consuming it. There's a reason why the Sun, the Daily Mail, the Express and those things, they are your biggest newspapers. They're the most successful in the UK. There's a reason why it's because you've been consuming it. It will stop when we stop. Is a reason why I don't post paparazzi pictures. I know better. I know if I post them and if we're consuming those things and we're posting it and screen sharing and whatever else we're doing, that tells them we want it. That tells them, oh, they like pictures of Harry and Meghan. Oh, well, let me get more intrusive. Let me get even more private pictures and go. And so then we can't then turn around and be outraged about the fact that they're doing it. They're going to stop doing it when we stop consuming it. That's just the thing. It's a demand business. That's how they do it. We demand it and they provide it. And they are just a reflection the tabloids in whatever they, in wherever they are is just a reflection of what we the people consume. And it's very clear when positive articles are say, let's say Twitter, when positive articles are on Twitter about the Sussexes, it's shared a lot less than when if the Daily Mail come out with some crazy negative article because why they can count on us to jump under their post and scream and yell at them. They don't care that you're screaming and yelling at them. They don't care what you put, as long as you engage, that's all they care about. You come and you click and you retweet and you share and you can be as outraged as you want. You can cuss their mother if they want to. They don't care. You engaged. And that's the thing. And they will always, those negative articles especially, will always beat out the positive ones because we feed it. And so we all have to take responsibility, uh, uh, you know, for our own, the things that we consume. That's why I always say, it's like, the, when we stop, they will stop. If we're not buying and if we're not consuming it, they will have nobody to sell it to. They're about money. They're about making money. And if you're not buying, guess what? They're not gonna make any money. So there you go. And that's my sermon for the day. <laughs> sorry <laughs> I mean to be like preaching about stuff but oh, I'm sorry about that <laughs> let's see I'm gonna scroll all the way down and go back up oh let's see see what you guys are oh hey Jeanette, Jeanette how are you I am so happy you are became wait a minute did I miss when you were a member before or maybe I'm thinking of someone else but if I if I'm thinking of someone else welcome Welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for um, being a member of our Two Cents crew. And again, Two Cents crew, please check um, our community page. That's where I post things for uh, Two Cents crew members. Please, please, please check our community page. Um, let's see. Uh, official Lauren Brown says, exactly, Pedal. That's why I keep my content positive. I am not a Sussex. I am not a Sussex channel, but I make Sussex videos. But I refuse to listen to negative articles because they would feed the hate. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'm always talking about this, like the things we post. Like, why are we posting negative articles about Sussexes? No need to do it, you know, because again, you feed that. Um, especially from the British tabloid. No, 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 no. They don't care if you're upset about them as long as you're clicking and sharing about it. So there you go. Um, let's see. Gwendolyn says, um, oh, she's talking to Shelly J. I think you may be right. They're probably paying this woman to make fa fake claims, hoping Harry would reveal the actual person. They are very devious. Oh, yeah. I mean, of course, that's the reason why they want Harry to and be, you know, to sit for the deposition. They want to see what they can read. I mean, this has all the markings of the, the only people that benefits from all of the nonsense that's coming out of that is the Daily Mail and, and this, the Sun and, and the Express and the Mirror. They are the ones that benefit up from that stuff. They, I mean, some of the nonsense that, it's, that again. You have to be really, you know, really, you know, really not paying attention to um you know what's going on to not see that the british press fingers is all over that case 
Uh, let's see, Sylvia says, totally right. Oh, well, thanks, let's see what I'm right about. That is why when there, there is something that needs to be seen, we have squaddies that copy and archive. But as Tina and Michelle used to say, and what we're still saying, stop clicking, exactly, stop. <laughs> stop clicking. I don't care if it's archived. I don't care if it's a uh, screenshot. I mean, it doesn't matter. As long as you're sharing it, you're doing their work for them and you're making them money. So then why should they stop? They won't stop. Uh, Kanita says, the British people buy papers and listen to Piers Morgan and that is why they continue to behave the way they do. Yeah, I mean, it's very clear. <laughs> it's very clear why this is happening. It's like they are groomed to believe that stuff and buy that stuff. And it's like they can't seem to break out of it. And again, if that's all, you know, you, you look at the situation as this, it's like, okay, you have 90% of your British press is right wing and that's what they're feeding them. And if they have no alternatives, well, they're going to keep eating that food, right? But if you realize like, okay, this is wrong. Let's, it's kind of like what Michelle and Tina did when they started Sussex Smart Podcast because all that was being fed was from the British press. And it was like, oh, no, 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 that is false. Let's create something else where we can speak the truth about what we see and what is happening. And that's how you got the Sussex squad and we are like sort of pushing back on the negative and false narrative. And that is exactly what needs to happen in the UK. Creative people, and, and you know, there are some independent outlets like, you know, Byline Times and Byline Investigates, Double Down News, and a few others that are there. So what the British be and the people, like-minded people need to do is to support channels like that and create more channels and more channels. The black community needs to have their own. You can't be depending on these outlets that are there that where you're like less than 3% of, you know, of represented and expect them to represent your voice. You have to create it. You have to create, come out and create stuff to feed your people so that they will stop buying the mess that, the, you know, the, the rest of the British press, the right wing press is feeding them. Because again, if you're only feeding on that their stuff, then you can't expect them to think differently. If you know the truth, come out from it and create your own content. So that is the thing that I see more and more people, especially in the black community. Again, they can't just be the voice. The voice can't just be the only paper that's there. And I know times are hard, but look, you got online. <laughs> you don't have to print a paper, create, whether it's a website, whatever you need to do. Even if it's a blog and get people and get on it, getting people to read it, publicize it, get it out there so that, you know, your community can be reading stuff that will benefit your community and stop expecting the daily mail to not be racist stop expecting the sun and the express and and in the times to not be racist misogynistic sexist and all the things that they are you have to stop and you know create your own outlet so you can speak the language of your people you know so for me again it's all a matter of coming out from among them and doing your own thing I mean, or you could just sit there and complain. So those are the choices you have. So I don't know. Um, let's see. And Louis says, yes, the news of the world was the Millie Dollar scandal and was closed down. P.S. Morgan is protected and probably alleged still hacks. Did they not hire investigators to go after Megan's security number? Yeah, the son did. They hired investigators and got her social security and phone and all of that stuff. And that, I mean, Megan hasn't, you know, she hasn't sued the son yet, but I'm sure that's still there. I, I don't think she would let go of that. But again, poor Megan is trying to start her life, you know, not start, but trying to live her life and have her career. Maybe, you know, they could still sue later over that. But yes, the son did. Um, uh, let's see. Paul, uh, Pauline Allen says, unfortunately, it appears that if, Blacks in the UK are still enslaved, even when the chains have been removed. Seared in my memory is the picture of that woman crawling to Char King Charles. Yes, I think that picture and that video is seared in all of our memories. And I remember a lot of um, prominent UK people were laughing, and I think it was laugh 
laughing out of embarrassment because it does represent a lot of what I see a lot of times when Charles and or Camilla or one of them go into the black community there is that exact mentality and even even when they're not crawling their behavior is exactly that the gratefulness the you know desperation is exactly that it's for me that crawling was just a physical representation of where else a lot of british blacks are and it is it's sad to see and it is you know and i hope that people saw that video and see themselves in it because that's a lot of it is how they come across you know and that's the thing it's like when you're in that situation there needs to be which is why i'm always speaking out against black people accepting those cbe's obe there needs to be you know they can't just be the dr shola and you know um a full cur there need to be a whole coalition of leaders in the uk who refuse to accept that and speak out and stand up so people can have a vision of people who would not bow down to royalty but they're so just like oh give me an award give me an obe and, and it's just like but you're just a tying your tying yourself to them so that way you can never come out and speak out against them and it's just i <laughs> like it's just it's sad because again even when they're you know laughing at this you know this woman who was crawling to charles a lot of the behavior is the same that's just a, a representation of where they are in their minds so Hopefully, Reverend Al Sharpton being there the other day just sort of inspired something. And I'm not saying all British Blacks are like that, because there are a lot of them that are speaking out and are standing up. But you see enough of them do this mess to for it to be a problem. And I'm sure it just it gnaws at you know the others who don't. And squatties in the UK, I'm always like, oh, all squatties having to see this mess. Um, but let's see. Mary Aid says, so true, cookies and cream. She's being disrespectful. The Duchess Megan, who is she? She has nothing to do with what Prince Harry did as a teenager. And if we're talking about that nonsense, I'm not even dealing with that. That nonsense girl who decided that she is who Harry was. I was like, I can't even. <laughs> that is British gutter that I am just not even going to go. <laughs> I just, no. Um, <laughs> I just can't unbelievable people are crazy um pauline allen says james o'brien is using his platform for the betterment of the british people yeah it's so funny uh he is a good one actually and i think he talked about he i think he used to work for a tabloid before and he talked about just him not just not being a good person then and then you know he got help and um he i think he also got help for um just mental help and all of that stuff and completely has turned around and he uses his platform now and he you know has been really supportive of even the harry and megan and just really uh speaking truth to power so he is a really good one on lbc you know they have really a lot of bad ones there too but he is one of the good ones there so if you ever check out lbc he is james o'brien is really a good one um uh let's see Um, Cookies and Cream says the hideous situation with that Sasha. Oh, is that woman again? Sasha person. They're using the situation to abuse Megan. Harry has never mentioned any name in the book. He needs to speak up and shut it down. Why? No. Um, no, just, you know, why? Harry's never mentioned who it is um, in the book. If someone wants to decide it's them, it's she's not mentioned she may not be the person he's even talking about so why even give air to that let her burn herself out and she will learn pretty soon you know harry spent a whole book um talking about the disgusting nature of the press and trolls he they did the docuseries they did oprah all of it talking about the, the what the press does and how it destroys and if somebody wants to do that to them then you just have to let them what, what will harry say you know, she might not even be the person who he's talking about. He said it's an older, he did not um, say it was anyone. So no, I, 
you know, I mean, if he wants to address it, it's him, but I wouldn't. I would just leave, leave her to burn herself out. Um, let's see. Calm down. Actually, I have a couple more things to talk about, so let's do that, and then we'll come back to the chat. Um, I forgot. I was like, oh, we have a couple more things. Changing topics completely. <laughs> um, the earthquake in Syria and um, and um, Turkey has, I mean, we, it's been definitely captured the world's attention, obviously, as it should. And um, lots and lots of people have lost their lives. And so, of course, um, you know, a lot of people have been asking, you know, who can we support? How can we, you know, give back? And one of the, the organizations that I have been recommending to everyone and posting about is World Central Kitchen, because I knew they would go. I knew they, I mean, they obviously run to the struggle. Um, so, and so Chef Andreas and, and his team, they are there in, um, they're serving Turkey and I think either Northern or Southern Syria that they are helping families there as well. And so uh, Chef Andreas posted this, it says in Ishle, Ish, Is, Islahi, I don't know how to say it. Um, at World Central's kitchen team arrived last night with sandwiches for search and rescue medics, brave first responders working 12 hours nonstop to help as many people after the earthquake. We had sandwiches for them and now we will keep coming back with hot meals. And then World Central Kitchen posted, the quakes destroyed thousands of buildings and left thousands more unsafe to inhabit. World Central Kitchen delivered meals at a parking lot in uh, Iskenderun, could say that wrong as well, where hundreds of people were spending the night. Families, many, uh, many with small kids, huddled around fires for warmth and, sl and sleep in cars. And so you can see um, them getting some of the food. Again, World Central Kitchen is out there doing the Lord's work um, in Turkey and I think either Southern or Northern Syria. Um, as well feeding people so that's a good organization to support if you're looking for someone again i will put the link in the show notes so that way definitely and this is an organization that sussex squad have done fundraisers for um you know and also the sussexes um also fund them as well so they're all i mean they're all over the world they have teams all over the world where there's a tragedy of any kind world central kitchens team they are there serving the people in need of some food. So great organization. And Invictus Games. I mean, I ho hope you guys have heard by now. Nigeria is in. They will be there. Invictus posted. Invictus Game Foundation would like to officially invite Nigeria to take part in the Invictus Games in Dusseldorf 2023. And that was their post. And then Invictus Nigeria responded. We are super excited to announce that uh, Nigeria will att be attending or will attending the Invictus Games Dusseldorf 2023 as the first African nation. And this is so great because when um they joined last year it was more of you know they're going to be taking um you know advantage of the endeavor fun, you know with all the um different sports things that they that, again invictus has a lot of things that's going on apart from the games so they were able to, to be able to take advantage of all the different things that invictus has to offer and including a lot of the training a lot of the disciplines learning about wheelchair basketball and you know sitting volleyball which is my favorite thing in the world and all of those things and so we've been seeing pictures and posting pictures all throughout of them practicing and all of those things and so I didn't expect that they you know and it didn't sound like it was expected of them that they would be ready for the games in Dusseldorf but if they have taken it to fish <laughs> take to water and they have been doing great and now they're going to be there in September um, at the games in Dusseldorf so it'll be amazing um, you know to have them there and to be able to support uh nigeria and one of the things that captain i think this is a captain was saying that um he had never heard of like sitting volleyball before and you know how because i think he had really um did damage this leg, you know, um, they're able to be able to play and to incorporate all these games that he never thought possible before. And now it's it's like almost like be a new renewed person. And this is all the, the what Invictus has been able to 
give back to veterans, give them back their life and give them a sense of, wow, I could accomplish all of these things despite my injury, despite my whatever it is I'm struggling with. And it's just it's so wonderful to see. So I have my new kudos to Team Nigeria. Um, they'll be there. And um, Invictus Dusseldorf tweeted, um, you know, um, British 22nd Nation officially announced and, uh, you know, the 22nd AMC original intent was Invictus Games Nigeria would, was to develop their sport recovery program. However, they will be now attending the Invictus Games with team of 10. Thanks to the recognition of the impact of program of the program um, on the community. And I'm going to post a link so you um, for Nigeria team talking about, you know, what the games has meant to them and how they've been able to develop so fast and now they are going to be at the games. Um, so and that Invictus Nigeria also said Nigeria joined the Invictus community um, of, of nations last year and the Invictus Endeavor program has had a massive impact on the journey to recovery of wounded soldiers and there they are playing some um, wheelchair basketball. Wheelchair basketball and sitting volleyball are the most exciting things ever. I love it so I cannot wait and I'm sure all of our Nigerian squaddies, Tina, <laughs> will be screaming for Nigeria. <laughs> so very, very, very exciting to see. And then also Colombia and Israel that joined last year as well are also going to be at the Invictus game. So yes, three entries um, into uh, Invictus 2023. And also it's great to see them get a little bit of press in um, CNN France, Nigeria gets Africa's first entry at Prince Harry's Invictus Games for the Wounded Veterans. And CNN Africa, Nigeria will become Africa's first participant in the Paralymp Paralympic style Invictus Games founded by Britain's Prince Harry for military personnel injured in service. So very, very, very exciting. Um, and very excited to be cheering on Team Nigeria and all the others too, but I will definitely be cheering on Team Nigeria. <laughs> Probably loudest. <laughs> uh, that's me being extremely biased. And finally, book donation. Our wonderful donors, Alan and our mystery donor, um, they have been sending out books um, that they have, out of the kindness of their heart, donated to our squaddies. Thank you guys so, so, so much for your generosity, for um, helping out our squaddies in need, and um, for, you know, out of the kindness of your heart, sharing the book with them. Some of you requested Tyler Perry's Higher Up, and some of you requested Spare. And so definitely, and so those books are going out to you. Some of you have already received them. And so thank you again to our incredibly, incredibly um, generous donors for, you know, out of the kindness of their heart offering to those of us who um, just need a little bit, needed a little bit of help. So thank you, thank you, thank you, generous donors. And, um, you know, enjoy the books, my dears. <laughs> thank you, guys. Um, let me jump in the chat for a bit. And, um, and we'll finish there and see what you guys are saying. So yes, uh, Pauline Allen. Pauline Allen says, "Oh, and gee, yes, it's awesome that Nigeria will be in Dusseldorf. Yes, it will be. It'll be so exciting. I am very much excited." Um, traditionally, oh, there's the link. So if you're in the chat and want to just copy this link, um, Trish uh, Nelly posted it in Victus London. So I'm assuming this is the link for the Nigerian team. So um, definitely you can post it there or um you could just get it off when i put it on in the show notes of this video so all the links will be there and you can just have it there um let's see what else yeah go invictus games yes that will be in september in dusseldorf and Marilyn ferguson bravo nigeria yes our awesome brothers and sisters from nigeria um let's see um Um, let's see. <laughs> Trish Nelly is celebrating Nigeria. Yes. 
Absolutely. Oh, and thank you, Trish Nelly, again, World Central Kitchen. That's there if you want to support. Trish, if you're in the chat and want to copy this, or again, it will be in the show notes at the end of this video. So thank you, Trish Nelly, for providing the links. Again, if you are free to go copy it from there, or again, you can get it from the um, show notes um, at the end of this video. Well, give me about 10 minutes while I put that in. <laughs> <laughs> well, I fill out my show notes with the links to all of this stuff. And I hope you guys just, you know, um, on every video, I put links to just about everything I talk about, except if it's a tabloid, I do not put links to tabloids. You, that you're going to have to go find yourself. I don't put links to tabloids in my show notes. So anything else, um, just about everything else, I will put a link to just so always, you know, if you have a question or want to find an article, whatever, if I talk about it here, most likely it will be in the show notes. So definitely. Um, Annie Bennett says that the devastation in Syria and Turkey is heartbreaking. It is beyond heartbreaking. It is just, and, and on top of that, you know, and please pray for the people, even though, you know, you know, for the, those that have survived it, I'm sure there are others that are buried under that rubble. It is cold in Turkey and I'm assuming Syria. It is cold and also snowing. And so it is just, you know, misery upon misery upon misery. And so it is just, and on top of that, I'm sure there's not a lot of food. Why, you know, World Central Kitchen is there. And it's just, oh, it is definitely, definitely heartbreaking. So please, please pray. And um, Janine is, you know, plotting World Central Kitchen. Yeah, it just, they will always run to the struggle. John to Emily, transition vlog. Hello, John to Emily. Um, also <laughs> celebrating and applauding World Central Kitchen. Uh, same as Connie Barma. They are doing, they do such a great job. I mean, their thing is, we're just going to feed people. We're just going to, there's no drama about anything. We're just here to make sure people, no matter what they're going through, at least they they have a plate of food, you know, and I, I appreciate that so much for what they do. Um, let's see. Uh, Anne says, uh, we will hear that, uh, we will hear that Harry and Meghan will be sending help to Turkey and Syria. Why don't those media moguls do something humanitarian? Um, you know, who knows? <laughs> I'm sure, you know, maybe they will, maybe they won't. I mean, I've heard of the royal family, I think Prince Charles and I think William and Kate. Um, they said they sent donations. I don't know, that's what I saw. Um, so let's see. Um, Chody says, he says, so I think you're it today. Um, <laughs> you're right. James O'Brien, Jay O'Brien is uh, far, the, uh, is the only LBC host who has the facts known no matter how much the media go after him about Harry and Meghan. They tried always fail. Yeah, they definitely tried to attack him, but he, you know, the guy's on the right side of history. He, he knows his stuff and he speaks facts. He speaks truth to power. And I, you know, you can't help but, um, you know, admire that and be like yeah it's like the lone voice in the darkness in the uk um let's see jennifer smith says i am really disappointed by the behavior of some of the black folks in that place uh, they need to liberate themselves from mental slavery and i think that's you know that is the thing as well it's like there is a lot of that um you know of just they are free, but the mind still isn't free. It's like, you know, still captured in, in the way we think about things and, the, you know, how we process things. Again, a lot of that woman crawling is a lot of the mentality that I see. So I'm not surprised um, to see it. Um, Jay Patterson says, also LBC Denise Headley, if the Headley, oh, or probably of the Headley show. Oh, okay. So I guess um, check out Denise Headley. I hadn't, I hadn't seen her thing come across my feed. So um, yeah, definitely check her out. If you're, you know, have access to LBC, I, you know, only uh, see what people post and I can watch it. But um, yeah, definitely check her out um, if you're able. So yeah, let's see. 
Um, oh, Connie, thank you so much for your super sticker. Thank you. I appreciate your support. Always supporting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Um, uh, let's see. Um, Sylvia says, pedal your right only if they put a podcast out once a week or once every two weeks at least. It could help. Of course, that is if Blacks can think on their own and not with skewed judgment. Um, I'm not sure I understand all of it. But yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I am all for if you want things done. You, <laughs> My grandma always says, if you want something done, you do it yourself. Um, and I believe that in a lot of ways, I think if we want to get the word out there or change the narrative or have our voice heard among our people or elevate the voices of our people and you see all around you, it's not being done and, and whatever is there is not, doesn't appreciate or even want you around or, you know, and the people who are in these, in, you know, at least many of the black and brown people in this community are sort of like just sort of bowing down to whatever is the standard for that outlet. I'm like, if you see that, then, you know, it behooves you to, and to gather people around you be like, no, we want to hear we want to get our people's voice elevated and create something and encourage your people to support that thing so that it can build. It is not impossible. It is not impossible. You know, I think we need to have more of an entrepreneurial mindset. We need to have more of a daring ourselves to do great things. You know, when you think of, say, Apple or Microsoft, these things that were started in garages by teenagers and you're like, well, you know, that, you know, yes, we can be like, okay, well, you know, they came from, maybe some of them came from, you know, middle-class America and white people and black people, you don't have the same privileges and all of those things, all of those things are true, right? But there is a balance, balancing where I feel like back in the day, that was more of an issue than it is now. We have a balance. It's sort of balanced now because of social media. You know, and we don't have to depend on rich people to launch a project or to to put out a video. I don't care if it's YouTube or wherever you or TikTok or wherever you, you know, your presence is. Launch it and put it there. You can do it for literal free. You can literally do it for free. And so more and more and more, I think. Um, you know, especially those who have pro already have prominent platforms, instead of say working for another, you know, ITV or getting a job at BBC, whatever, how about coming together and create a black one? There is apparently a BBC, you know, um, I'm sorry, it, there's all, or there's a BET UK. I never hear of BET. Like, what are they doing? I, I, I don't see any. I mean, maybe how about you guys come together and build that up? BET already has a name. People recognize that name. I only heard of BET when we were asking people to speak out for Megan, and everybody was in shock that there was a BBC UK. <laughs> we were like, what? Who knew? And then they went away, and I never heard from them or heard of them again. But they do have a name in the sense of BT. So maybe gathering together and get that out there and, and use that because it already has a name, you know, anything to elevate the voices of black and brown people where you don't have to depend on the BBC and ITV and the, definitely not the, tab the tabloids because you know they don't like you. They don't want us. They don't like us. You know, they wish the black people would leave the UK. They keep saying it. So why should we depend on them to speak kindly of a black person or even the culture? You know, um, Alice Zoom says Nana Akua is another version of a crawling black person. Yeah, you see, <laughs> I mean, that's a crawling black person with a horrible wig. You know, <laughs> it's just like, I can't get over it. I see her, I'm like, can somebody give this child a proper wig, please? 
you know, at least I think that's what she's wearing on her hair because it definitely looks like a wig. And maybe I'm being really shallow right now with Nana and her wig, but I cannot, I can't unsee her wig. Every time I see a picture of her, I cannot unsee the wig. So, <laughs> and I'm sorry, I'm being really shallow, but it's like that mentality. And you know, somebody like, I mean, you just gotta have to leave her and do her thing, but we can't have that be what you know black people are seeing we can't we have to elevate positive voices for our people <laughs> you know so again I, i'm belaboring that point but you know that's what i see anyway um a couple more before we end let's see Dolores Williams says the British uh, population is given the tabloids power by buying it and uh, as it is a newspaper. If they lose attention, they will die out. Yeah, it's like, again, demand, uh, you know, <laughs> supply and demand business. If, if you are demanding it, guess what? They are going to supply it in large numbers and they are going to brainwash you into believing you need it. We have to wean ourselves off of it. And that's the problem, weaning yourself off of tabloid nonsense. So, um, let's see. Um, Lorna says, hi Lorna, how are you? Lorna says, as we speak, people are digging into this 15 minutes background. All her daily laundry would be hung out soon. Oh, uh, you're, still, you're talking about that girl? Of course. Uh, if you're still talking about that girl, yeah, of course. I mean, again, I have no sympathy there. It's like you, again, Harry and Meghan have done all of these interviews, books, docu-series talking about the dangers of the British press and if you decide you're going to take money to spill your life to them then you're on your own there I, there's nothing else anybody can do so whatever she gets is whatever she gets it's unfortunately but some people don't learn until they experience it for themselves some people don't learn they have to learn the hard way and you know good luck to her that's all I say um, <laughs> Uh, uh, Dolores says, Harry needs not say nothing else on this matter. Oh, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't even address it. I would I never. I would not even go nowhere near that. Um, so, yeah. Let's see. More. Uh, let's see, scrolling all the way down, get some a few more before we end. Um, Annie says, good for Nigeria, hoping for South Africa to also join one day. Yeah, I'm looking for, you know, a bunch more. Also, Caribbean, I'm looking for a Caribbean country, preferably mine. <laughs> Trini, yeah, Trini and Tobago, I'll be rooting for that. So yes, but very excited, uh, very, very, very excited um, for Nigeria and also Colombia and Israel. Um, they are going to be joining it as well. So yeah, um, let's see. And Lewis says, um, Annie Bennett, Turkey and Syria are quick so we reflect on our humanity, life and community. RIP to those who's who lose family and love those who survive thanks all thanks to all the helpers yeah it just oh it's such a tragedy absolutely absolute tragedy sean, oh, thank you so much sean i appreciate your donation thank you thank you thank you uh sean says samantha is eligible to participate in invictus anything to get close to megan i can see her rolling <laughs> God, rolling that chair fast to get to Megan stay on stage. <laughs> it just gave me a visual that I can't get out of my mind showing. Why did you just do this to me? Why? Why? <laughs> I was all peaceful under my tree in my mind and you just gave me this visual. Oh my Lord, Sean, what are we going to do with you? <laughs> what are we going to do with you? So anyways, uh, <laughs> 
this is just bad. It is just so bad. <laughs> Um, Beverly Isidore says, Prince Harry must have no fear for the Lord is with him and will strengthen him. And he must be aware of hungry people who want to make money off him because of what he wrote in his book about himself. Amen. Amen to that. I mean, gosh, so many people have been doing that all along. So um, making money off them. And again, we know that there's a billion dollar, I hate Meghan Markle, um, industry out there. So what they will, I mean, they will do everything to make money, unfortunately. So yeah. Um, uh, Sylvia says, Pedalette podcast in the UK is what I'm speaking about. Yeah, I want there to be, I mean, if it's saying the same thing is yes, I am talking about podcasts in the UK. There were a couple of people who had podcasts, uh, yeah, a couple of UK squatties who had podcasts. And I have not heard from them in a while. I haven't heard anything from them. So I don't know if they just completely I shut down the podcast. I don't know what happened. So, but hopefully, I mean, some of you know, if you guys in the UK want to start a podcast, a website, a blog, whatever, um, is, you know, start. And I'm more than happy to help in any way that I can. Um, so yeah, absolutely. Because again, it starts from somewhere, you know, we have a tiny channel compared even within the squad but it started with three i just we just celebrated six thousand you know baron started with nothing baron is not out up to what about thirty thousand maybe even more than that you know so it's like it starts from one subscriber to where you have now thousands and so it's just start that's all i'm saying just start and allow us to, you know, support and uh, help you grow it. So yeah, um, <laughs> Sandy, this is just so bad. <laughs> this is not a wicked sticking on her personality. <laughs> and yeah, it's just a, a very, a very, very bad personality. That wig, I just, I cannot unsee that wig. Honestly, I cannot unsee it. <laughs> And this is just bad. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't mean to offend anyone. It just is something that I just, anytime I see a picture, that's all I can look at is the wig. I can't, I cannot listen to her. I just see the wig. And I have nothing against wigs. I've never worn a wig, but I have nothing against wigs. I just don't like a wig. <laughs> so, um, all the impossible says, but I saw better up uplifting two-day seminar tickets are sold out um another stomach burns for narnia yeah i mean i signed up so hopefully you guys have signed up for better up um i think it's coming up in march so definitely i already signed i signed up the first the moment i saw it i went right and signed up so there you go so hopefully you guys are signed up i'm actually gonna find the link and put it in our show notes again so that people can find it um so anyway a couple more before we end I am hungry. I'm going to go off and get some food. <laughs> I need to go eat something. So um, one more before we end. Um, Lydia, our awesome moderator, says that there are some Black UK people with podcasts. Not big, but there are people. Chez moi is one. Oh, okay, fantastic. Chez moi, I'm, I'm assuming that's how it says. Thank you, Lydia. for. Uh, so please check out Chez moi and... Maybe that's, I said that right, but C-H-E-Z-M-Y um, is a podcast that we could all check out and support. So that is wonderful. Thank you so much, um, Lydia, for um, uh, letting us know about that. So awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, yeah, that's just like us was the podcast from the UK and it was wonderful. Yes, that was it. And I was like, I miss those ladies. I love their podcast. I was always like, look out, um, look out for their podcast, but I haven't, um, I haven't heard from them in a while. So I don't know if they shut it down or they're, you know, I guess people get busy doing other things that, that is up sometimes. So yeah, definitely. Um, but definitely check out since Shane Moore is there. So let's check out, out and support. And of course, the Duchess of Success is there. So Anne is doing her thing. I'm so excited. And her podcast is growing and she's doing great things. So definitely keep supporting um, that. So anyways, guys, that's it. I am running off to get some food. 
because I'm starving. Thank you all so much for hanging out with me and um, just, you know, chatting on a Friday afternoon. Thank you to our awesome moderators, Lydia Church, uh, Lydia Church Nelly, Karen M, Cookies and Cream. Thank you all so much for the amazing, amazing work that you do always. I put my little scrolly thing back there on the bottom. If you have not subscribed, if you're new here, definitely click the subscription, the subscribe button and click the notification bell so you know when we drop a video. Please like this video. Please, please, please like us. <laughs> Share it so we can continue to build our channel. We are over 6,000. We want to get to 7,000 quickly. And join if you're able. Join our Two Cent Screw. And that would be awesome. And yes, our Two Cent Screw. Don't forget, um, we uh, I've invited you to come and be a guest blogger on my blog. So if you love writing and you have, you know, some yeah, just a, a little inspirational story in a community, nothing, don't give away your address or anything like that, whatever. But you know, if you have a little uh, inspirational story, you can either, you'd like to write or if it's on video, whatever, or if you want to film a video, definitely send it in to us and uh, send it in to me so that, you know, I'd love to share your story with the rest of the community and just put it on the blog. So that's for our two cents crew members. If you are interested, I'd love to, I'd just absolutely love to hear, get, you know, to share your creativity. So that is something that you can do. So thank you again so much. And um, all our two cents crew members who support the channel on a monthly basis, I appreciate you so, so, so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And all of our GoSaw supporters who support it here in our chat, you see them uh, at a donation. Uh, super thanks, super stickers, super all the supers. <laughs> and also PayPal and Cash App or merchandise. Thank you all so much. And I haven't really shown our merchandise in a while. Let's see. We do have merchandise. Uh, let's see our merchandise. Uh, yep. Uh, let's see. And do this. Yep, these are all our uh, Gold Star supporters here and uh, our merchandise. Yep, there we do have merchandise. So if you're interested, the link is also in the show notes. So you can definitely check out our merchandise and have one of our facts and two cents stuff. That would be awesome as well. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. Have a great, great, great Friday and have a fantastic weekend. And I shall be talking to you soon. Have a great day, guys. Bye!